Hi, I'm Norman Goldman. Thanks for spending a moment with me on the video version of the Norman Goldman Show. So let me share with you how to fight a traffic ticket in court. First of all, you need to recognize a couple of things before you even go to court, and these are really important. In many states, there's a thing called traffic school. And if you have a simple speeding ticket, a simple traffic violation, it's called an infraction. An infraction is one layer below a misdemeanor. An infraction means no jail time, it's just a fine. Uh, now, it could be damaging because it'll put points on your driving record at the DMV, right? And you get a certain number of points, your license gets suspended. It'll also raise your auto insurance rates because your auto insurance company is monitoring your uh, driving record online with the Department of Motor Vehicles all the time and certainly upon uh, renewal of your auto insurance. So you want to have as clean a driving record as you can. In many states they have driving school where you can have a traffic ticket just wiped clean off the books as if it never happened by paying the fine that goes along with the traffic infraction and then paying the fee to go to traffic school, completing traffic school, sending in the paperwork to the court, and it's as if the traffic violation never happened. Now, in many courts and in many counties and in many states, they have a policy that says if you contest the traffic ticket by going to court, you lose your opportunity to go to traffic school, meaning you have to make a choice. In my state and county, uh, if you decide to contest the traffic ticket, you can't go to traffic school. Uh, the judges are very funny about that, actually. They say, look, you don't get two bites at the apple. If you want me to give you a fair trial, and there's no jury in these cases, by the way, if you want me to give you a fair trial and you lose, you can't then say, well, now I'll go to traffic school. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Either go to traffic school and I never see you, or come down here and contest it and take your chances. So you have to make that decision long before you contest the traffic ticket. Let's assume that you go and contest the traffic ticket for whatever reason or reasons that you choose. There is no jury trial, and very often, very often, the judge is not your friend. Now, judges typically come from the prosecutor's office. If you want to be a judge, firstly, you got to be a lawyer. Second of all, it's very helpful if you were a public prosecutor a district attorney, a county attorney, most judges were prosecutors. And when they get on the bench and they put on those robes, they don't suddenly transform their personality. They're still prosecutors at heart. They try, they do. Most of them are, you know, acting in pretty good faith on traffic tickets. They try and be fair, but let's be honest. Most of them are biased against you, and they've worked in their career with police officers on cases all the time when they were prosecutors. They often know the police officer. They trust the police officer. And if the police officer shows up and testifies against you, nine out of ten times, your goose is cooked. Probably nine and a half out of ten times. I have seen very few cases where the police officer loses and the citizen wins. Most often, when the citizen wins, it's because the officer does not show up to court. If the officer does not show up, you ought to win automatically. The judge should, on his or her own, simply say, you're here, the officer is not, case dismissed. The judge just says, you're here, officer's not here, you're free to leave, case dismissed. In that case, get out of there. Don't engage with the judge, don't talk anything. Your idea is to get in and get out. I have seen, personally, and I have heard from very you know, reliable sources, many judges, decide they're going to get cute. And they shouldn't be doing this. It's not their role. A judge is there to be an umpire, call balls and strikes. In many courtrooms, the uh, judge sits elevated up on a bench. And the judge's bench, what we call the bench, not only is elevated, but it's in the middle of the courtroom. And that's not an accident. The idea is the judge is supposed to be right down the middle and above the fray. That's why we have judges right down the center of the courtroom and elevated because they're supposed to be down the middle and above the fray. Unfortunately, especially in traffic cases, judges understand that police officers are very busy. And, you know, there's a significant portion of the time, 20%, 30%, sometimes 50%, where the officer just can't show up. The officer's on vacation, the officer's sick that day, the officer's on patrol and couldn't get to court. I mean, it takes time for the officer to go down to court. Judges get sometimes out of their own skin, and they shouldn't do this. It's not right. If the officer isn't there, they turn into the prosecutor, and they start quizzing you, and that's wrong. But you can't say that. That's not going to work for you. What you've got to do 
if the judge starts to talk to you about your traffic ticket or your traffic whatever, uh, you got to say, Your Honor, the officer is not here. I didn't do it. Please let me go. Please dismiss the case. Now, you always address the court as Your Honor. Always. Just say, Yes, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Never be rude. Don't lecture the judge. Don't wag your finger in the judge's face. These are people, too, and they don't appreciate disrespect. They think pretty highly of themselves. They're judges, and they expect that you're going to think pretty highly of them, too. Even if you don't think pretty highly of them, you have to make it look like you do. So you be respectful, and you say, yes, Your Honor, no, Your Honor. And if you're in a situation where there's no police officer there, and the judge starts quizzing you, I have seen this with my own eyes, where judges do this and people implicate themselves. They incriminate themselves and the judge finds them guilty even without the officer there because the judge has played prosecutor and that's wrong. But it happens and I don't want it happening to you. You've got to do it in a very, very gentle tone of voice. And, you know, I, this is an outlier situation. This doesn't happen very often, but if it happens to you, I want you to be prepared. And if anything happens where the judge starts talking to you about the circumstance of the ticket and the officer's not there, I want you to remember our little conversation here and just say, Your Honor, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I just didn't do it. And don't get into a discussion about it. Just keep saying, I didn't do it. And the officer's not here. Please dismiss the case. Okay? I'd like you to watch this video over and over again and memorize these lines. The longer you talk, the more detail you get into. You may think you're smart. You may think you're clever. Every word out of your mouth is one more opportunity for the judge to find you guilty or get you into trouble. Court is not the place you want to be spending your time. Get the hell out of there. And the way to get the hell out of there is keep your answers short and sweet. So thanks again. I hope I've gotten you out of any potentially sticky situations. And we'll see you next time on the video version of the Norman Goldman Show.